Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a bunch of different kinds of pickles. And this is actually a really important video because we are probably going to reference a lot of these in future videos. Pickles are some of the best and easiest things that you can put on any dish that just immediately makes it better. So for today, we're gonna to cover three basic pickled recipes that I think everyone should know. We have pickled red onions, very, very classic. We have the quick pickled cucumber. Finally, these are mustard seeds. It's like the caviar of condiments. It does matter which direction you cut your onions um, when it comes to any kind of cooking method. If you're making onion rings, you can cut them this way, that's great. But if you're going to pickle them, if you're going to uh, cook them in any kind of way, imagine the hair is still on it, the top is still on it. So this is the top of the onion, this is the bottom of the onion, up and down. Basically you're flipping it on its side, cutting it in half, and you're cutting it in this direction this way right here. That way it exposes fewer of the fibers of the cells, which would break down and lose water when you process them and when you cook them, which leaves you with crunchier, more structurally pleasant onions. And because we are minimally processing them, that is to say pickling them and not cooking them, the texture kind of matters. So just doing it this way will provide us with better Results. Now, if you were gonna do that using this guy, you would set it. Now it's at this point where you decide like, you know, where your values are. You can try to be that guy that's like, oh, I wanna get this last little bit and then potentially cut the tips of your fingers off. Don't be a hero. So you're beautiful and uniform, way better than what I do with a knife. Always side to side, not, uh, so cutting this way, not this way. Yes! Ah, oh, no, I have this. And there you have it. That was my toxic trait right there. Whenever you're pickling anything, you, there are a whole bunch of vinegars that you could choose from. There's always the basic white distilled vinegar, which is fantastic. I really like the mild sweetness that comes with rice vinegar, not rice wine vinegar and not sushi seasoning rice vinegar, just plain distilled rice vinegar. For the red onions, I'm gonna go for a mixture of rice vinegar and distilled white vinegar. And then for the mustard greens, I'm pretty much just going to do the rice vinegar, but there are so many that you can play with. All the parts for the recipes are equal parts regardless of the vinegar that you're using. Now for, what are these? Red onions. Now for red onions, I'm just gonna go with basic white vinegar for now, plus a couple of spices. We're gonna keep it super simple. For pickling red onions, you need a vinegar, you need a salt, a sugar, and like maybe a spice or whatever spices you wanna jazz it up with. Um, because I'm gonna use this for a whole bunch of different things, I will keep it pretty simple at this part. The only different thing that I will use is instead of salt, I'm gonna use fish sauce, just because I want a bit more of that like, you know, funky punch to it. Also, instead of sugar, I'm gonna use erythritol again. Same, same. For making the pickle, at least for me, measuring is not all that important. What is important is you just make enough liquid to cover the onions. Right now, that's two large onions. I would say this is probably like five cups of vinegar. We're gonna do, this is like two tablespoons, two, four, six tables, eight tablespoons of monk fruit sweetener. You need to use more of this than you would regular sugar because it's just not as sweet as regular sugar. And about a teaspoon of fish sauce. That was like a tablespoon of fish sauce. For the spice element, we're just gonna use black peppercorns. We'll be a little more fun when it comes to the mustard greens. What we'll do is just we'll heat this up until all of the sugar melts and all of everything has been incorporated. You don't have to bring it to a boil or anything. 
While these are going, we can just jar up the onions first. Not packing them in too tightly, otherwise it'll be like a whole bunch that just won't have any contacts with the vinegar. And once everything has incorporated, you just kind of like, it's very much a season to taste and a personal preference thing. Oh, that's very nice. It could be like just a little bit sweetener, but that's super nice. I think fish sauce is going to be a thing that I do regularly now instead of salt for my onion pickles because that was delightful. We're gonna let it cool a little bit because we're not trying to cook the onions, we're just trying to pickle them. That'll cool it down nicely and quickly. So now that our mixture has cooled a little bit, it's not supposed to be cold, it's just no longer supposed to be. Now that it's cooled significantly, we're not trying to get it cold, just no longer like piping, piping hot. We can uh, ladle it into the <laughs> red onions. You'll notice pretty quickly that the red onions are going to become nice and pink. And that is because onions are a pH indicator. And when things are acidic, they will become more brighter red in color. If you wanted them to be blue, you would put them in with like a baking soda water solution. It wouldn't taste good, but they would be very, very blue. It's kind of cool to see. That was almost enough. I'm gonna top it off with just a little bit. I would say instead of five cups for two large onions, maybe six or seven cups of vinegar, just to be safe. We're gonna go with white vinegar, which is more neutral in the sense of just for our top off. And then we'll shake it to incorporate. Ideally, you will have these in here for a couple hours to overnight, and they should be at their peak by that time. Pickled mustard seeds are one of my favorite things to pickle. If you are grilling some steak, and you kind of like just top this off with some pickled mustard seeds. First of all, they add like an amazing acidic quality to like something fatty like a steak, but also they just look so fancy. Like it's something that you'll see at higher end restaurants used a lot, but it's pretty easy to make and it's not very expensive to make. So this is what regular pickled mustard seeds look like. And this is what they look like after they've been blanched a couple of times. Mustard seeds, more so brown mustard seeds than yellow ones, can be a little bit bitter. So it helps if you blanch them once or twice. With brown ones, maybe even more. Once, you know, the water that you blanch them in stops tasting bitter, it's pretty much okay to use at that point. Plus you get to see how big they're going to get. For mustard seeds, I would ideally have apple cider vinegar, but I don't have any right now, which is fine because rice vinegar is great too. So we're gonna use rice vinegar, a little bit of white vinegar, as well as some brown sugar or sugar substitute and some other fun stuff. We're gonna add more spices to this one. The whole spices that I'm going to add in with the pickled mustard seeds are cinnamon, star anise, and fennel. The reason why I'm choosing these three is because A, the cinnamon and the star anise are delicious, but they're also easy to remove out. Because of the way that, you know, the mustard seed is, it's hard to take out small spices if you're not going to eat them. Fennel, when it's pickled, acts very much like mustard seeds in the sense that they are kind of like snappy and delicious and great to eat all on its own. So I don't mind putting fennel in there. In fact, that's one of the ways that like, that's one of the things that makes like my pickled mustard seeds a little bit special is that there's a lot of fennel in there. I'm gonna add just a little bit of my master stock seasoning in here. You can use garam masala or five spice if you would like, because there are just some other components. There are some other spices in there that wouldn't work out as a whole spice, but we want the flavor in there, so we're just gonna mix a tiny little bit in that. Other things we're gonna mix besides the vinegar and sugar, I'm gonna put a little bit of cognac in there. You can experiment with different types of liquor. Rum is fantastic, whiskey is great, rye is fantastic as well. I just happen to have some of this lying around, so that's what I'm gonna use. And yeah, let's get everything put together. 
sugar. <laughs> That's one way to measure everything out without actually have to measure anything out. So in here I have all the spices, the vinegar, the liquor, and the sugar, and I'm bringing it to a boil first. And once that has done, you can see it's pretty much there now, I'm going to reduce this down into a simmer. And then once it... <laughs> Make a mess, but then add in your pickled mustard seeds. And then let that simmer for like 15 minutes. Um, and then once that is done, they are pretty much ready to go right away, but they will be better tomorrow. Um, we're just gonna leave that shot because we show our mistakes and I'm super messy, so. While those mustard seeds are simmering, we're just gonna go right into the cucumbers because that is super, super quick. You are going to start off with two English cucumbers. They are the ones with the softer skin. They usually come in the grocery store with like a plastic wrap around them to protect them. Very simple, very easy. With your mandolin or a knife, just... Did I? No, no. Set it to what you want it to be first because before this was for onions and now I want it to be for cucumbers which are much thinner. Now it gets scary, okay. Okay, no, that's, that's good. So these are still on a little bit of the thicker side. Um, I like them that way because I like to shingle them when I make sandwiches and stuff, like so. And I need the structure when I do that. But after this, it is just simply a matter of salt and sugar and just a splash of vinegar and you're done. So salt. You notice that I use like sugar substitutes a lot in my food. I have actually nothing against sugar. I just like to like minimize it where I think I could get away with minimizing it. So if I'm trying to only balance something out with sweetness as opposed to have sweetness be like the primary factor of a dish, I'm gonna use this instead. But like if I was gonna make brownies or a dessert or a cocktail or something like that, I'm gonna use regular sugar because you just can't replace regular sugar in those situations. But for this, where it's like salty, sour, and sweet, generally you can get away with it. And now just a splash of vinegar here. And why not? Just a little bit of chili flakes for color and because I have no self-control. And you just mix that up. You'll notice immediately that it gets a little bit more intensely green, intensely colorful, and you can smell it. It smells like more cucumbery as you mix this all together. And I would give you measurements, but the best thing to do is really just to keep adding stuff and tasting as you go. That's actually pretty good. That works out pretty well. I need just a little bit more of this. And touch more of this. Again, Right hand touches food, left hand touches everything else. You see all the liquid that's coming out, that's being drawn out of, I mean, some of that's the vinegar, but a lot of that is from the uh, cucumbers themselves. Mmm, see? Oh, it's perfect. And they even like look like pickles now. And like for as fast as that was, you can still make it ahead. Like you could still do this and have it in the fridge for like a couple days and it will still be great to use. So have this ready to go, but just know that like, even though you can make it ahead, it didn't take that long to do in the first place. And look, this is done, I think. Just check it. Everything is hot, everything is hot. The jars are hot. <laughs> it's 
It's like I was impatient to dry these, so I just like stuck them in the oven. You can remove a lot of the, the brine, but not too much. It'll continue to absorb it. You just don't need so much at this point. So you can pour some out in there. You can drain out the excess brine so it all fits into one jar. Don't do it so much that it's completely dry because these will continue to absorb some of the brine itself and get even tastier over time. Again, this will be great tomorrow. Let me just show you like one of the best ways to enjoy it. This is the steak that we cooked like a little while ago, um, some leftovers. And so you have just like a piece of steak here, maybe a green salad, add in just a healthy serving of so of that. And it's going to be one of the best pieces of meat that you would have ever made because you have such a nice counterbalance of sweet and tangy that acid next to that fat and salt. There, there is your amazing bite. Mm. It's so good, it's so good. You'll be seeing these guys pretty shortly. In the next few videos, I'll be using them almost right away. Totally worth it just to have on hand for whatever it is you decide to make.